valid arguments. You define an argument as being made up by things called premises, and sometimes premises are called propositions. They have to lead to a conclusion. So an argument is usually indicated by you know, key words like therefore and hence and others as well. So looking at a highly abstract version here, we've got an example. Emus cannot fly. Jane is an emu. What conclusion can we draw from this? All right, so emus cannot fly. Jane is an emu. We're after a conclusion. The conclusion, um, we can give a, a symbol. Let's give it the symbol R. And basically comes from the conjunction of the premises. So they've given emus cannot fly, the symbol P, and Jane is an emu, the symbol Q. And again, the symbols are arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what they are. We can see that it's written in this vertical form. That's something we need to get used to because you'll see a bit of that. These things above the line are premises. That's where premises are written, above the line. And the conclusion is written below the line. So two premises and a conclusion. So arguments can have their validity tested. So it's about testing validity. And that's done by analyzing of analysis of premises and conclusions. Okay, so that's, that's the name of the game here. So we're looking at the validity, and we're testing the validity of arguments. Now our study of logic is not worried about whether these um, premises here, in this example it was emus cannot fly and James is an emu, we're not concerned about whether those things are true or not. We're we're considering the validity of what can be inferred from them. What valid conclusions can we come to? Is a conclusion valid or invalid? Things like that. So we're not worried about whether the premises are true or not. We take them in our study, we take them as true. Okay, so those things are true. They're considered true in our study. We're looking for whether a conclusion is valid, an argument is valid, whether you can validly draw that conclusion or infer that conclusion validly from the argument or not. So it's a game of analysis. Now we're going to look at an example. And we've got P and Q. P, X is a positive integer, and Q, X plus 5 is less than 2. We're asked... Is this a valid argument? So, is that argument written there valid? And it says, if P then Q and we have Q, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is P. Is that valid? Okay, so if X is a positive integer, then X plus 5 is less than 2 and we have x plus 5 less than 2, do we have x as a positive integer? Is that true? Written in logic form, we've got this basically. Okay, so if p implies q and we have q, does that imply p? Okay, so what you see just here and what you see just here uh, pretty much the same statement, just in different forms. First thing we need to do is get our good old friend the truth table happening. So the first column we need is P implies Q. So you could have even had um, before this two um, columns with P and Q to the left here. You could have you could have had a column P and a column Q and that could have been there. However they're also over here on the right because we use them later on when we get up to the AND 
and the second implication phase. So as long as they're written down in front of us, some people might find them handy if we put an extra P and Q column over on the left. So remember how implication works. If we've got the first premise P and the second premise Q, true implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. And false implies false is true from our previous work. It just goes to show you need to be super fluent with the truth table for P implies Q because it gets used a lot. Okay, so we've got values for P implies Q. We've got and Q. So we're looking at this part here, and Q. So we've got true and true is true. False and false is false. True and true is true. True and false is false. So we have TF, TF. In the next step, we are up to including the implies P. So that this part here. Okay, so remember the order is important. We want the results for the AND, which are basically here. And we start with that and then we're going implies P second. Please get the order correct. The P is second in this particular case. So you've got true implies true, which is true. We have false implies true, which is true. We have true implies false, that's false. And we have false implies false, which is false. Apologies, false implies false is true, I should say. Okay, so we've got true, true, false, true. What's absolutely crucial here is that the final result, whether it is a tautology or not, remember a tautology is where all logic values are true and they're not. So this is not a tautology and therefore this is not a valid argument. Now a good student will also analyze what led to the false conclusion here. Okay, that's that's important because everything else led to true and it was this one condition here. What were the conditions for P and Q? Well, it, P was false and Q was true led to to a false there. Now, it, you could, again, you could write the original P and Q over here. It doesn't really matter. You just got to go from right to left.